Hey, I'm here with Scott Berkey today. Scott, thank you. You just shared with us at our Children's Ministry Leader Conference. It was really cool to have all of our volunteers and staff and people come out. And one of the things I know you shared about was curriculum. And I know as a children's pastor, choosing curriculum is always a difficult prospect because there's yeah. so much out there and it's hard to pin down exactly what I'm looking for. So I was just yeah. wondering, could you share just a little, about, a little bit about what's out there and what people should be looking for when they choose a curriculum? Yeah, definitely. You know, Brent, there is a lot of choices out there. You know, you can, uh, if you want your mind blown, just Google that children's curriculum. You know, you'll see <laughs> that you, there's just tons. Hits. Yeah, just yeah. one or two maybe. Um, then, so there's a lot of different variety out there and a lot of it is really good. You know, um, it, a lot of times depends on how much you want to spend. Mm -hmm. um, to get different features. But I think the first thing that you want to look at is you want to look at doctrinal purity. You know, what uh, is what we're teaching the kids going to line up with what the adults are learning? And then right. we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page because you don't want to cause confusion. You know, uh, when the kids are being taught one belief system in the classroom, you, you know, as a children's pastor, you're not in every room. Uh, and so you're probably not reading every single lesson that the kids are being taught. Right. So you need to make sure that the curriculum lines up doctrinally. Yeah. Uh, and how you do that, probably the first and, and easiest way to do that is to go to your denominational uh, curriculum, where, wherever that is for you. Um, and just look and see. And I always tell people that's the first place to look. You right. know, start yeah. there and see. But if it doesn't meet your needs... Don't be afraid to look elsewhere. Don't be afraid to be trapped into that box because, um, you know, I'm speaking from a denominational standpoint. Right. Uh, it's our job to create resources that the local church needs, you know, and wants. Yeah. And so uh, if, if we're not doing that, then go somewhere else and find somebody that is. And you start that process of, okay, does it doctrinally pure? Okay, yes, it, it meets that. And then you, there's a series of things you look at, you know, cost. Right. Cost is a big one. Yeah, huge. You know, not every church can afford to spend hundreds of dollars on curriculum each year. And so maybe maybe you, you look for ways to supplement with free. There's all kinds of free stuff. You know, uh, Church on the Move does a, a website called Seeds. That's a great one to yeah. go. Uh, you just Google Church on the Move Seeds, and it, all their stuff is free. Right. You know, Life Church does the same thing. They're giving away. More and more uh, churches are giving away resources. And so to tap into some of those for your extra pieces to come alongside what you're doing is a great way to get some some freebies and everybody likes free stuff oh yeah free you know? stuff so, always comes so, in handy um, so that's good uh, the cost and then you need to look okay is this a is this a fad curriculum because right. a lot of times that happens a lot what of are, times what are some things you say fad curriculum what are some really popular trends right now that you see is yeah. maybe fading out soon or you know I don't know if they'll fade out because I hope it doesn't fade out I see a trend of more and more curriculum uh, talking to even some of the guys that were here more and more curriculum is starting to look to add small group components right uh, you know as a, a, f a former kids pastor like me that that the, we can teach a lot and do a lot of things from the stage, but to get kids to actually apply it to their life, it's got to happen in a small group setting. Right, right. And so I see more and more curriculums adding that element. You know, we're trying to, we're looking at, okay, everything that we're producing, how are we adding a small group element to it? And I know other curriculums, uh, High Voltage is doing the same thing. They're, they're looking to retool everything and how can we add small groups to it? Right. Uh, I think that is a trend, like I said, that hopefully it doesn't, hopefully that's not a fad. Hopefully that's not something that's here for a little while right, and goes yeah. away because it's so effective. Um, I would say another one is a family component. And a lot of people think that the family component has to be this big, elaborate stage production that you do in front of moms and dads and kids. Mm -hmm. That's great, but realistically, that's not up to us as a children's pastor if that's going to happen. Right, because yeah. Because stage time is, is dictated a lot of ways from the lead pastor. Yeah. And if, if, if that lead pastor is willing to give the stage time, then great, let's do it. Let's go for it. Uh, but the family component that I think is, is the ones that are most effective is the ones that are putting tools uh, alongside of the curriculum into the parent's hand. Uh, because the parent has to be the primary discipler of the kid. Yeah, uh, we're with the kids for limited windows. Parents are there for. I mean, they're, they're there driving them to school at meal, meal times, all these different times. And so, look for a curriculum that has that family component that will allow you uh, the, to put the tools in moms and dads' hands in your church, right, right. so that they can continue the discipleship. So, someone say has kind of gone through these steps. They've identified something that they think can mm -hmm. work for them. Do they? Does that? curriculum then become a platform upon which they base their ministry or is that curriculum a tool that they use to uh, to tweak the platform of their ministry what do you see people using curriculum as both 
Yeah. You no, know, really both. It, um, uh, faith case is a perfect example. You know, we go into some churches and it's their whole kids ministry is faith case. Well, that's all well and good until faith cases, you run out of faith case lessons. And right. Then you're in, then yeah. you're in trouble, right? <laughs> uh, or any any kind of lesson in that yeah. regard. And so I would, I would caution someone in saying we're going to base our whole kids ministry around the curriculum. Right. I think that you need to sit down with your lead pastor and maybe a, a few key influential parents in your ministry. If you're just getting started and you, you, you're starting to land on a curriculum and you say, you know, um, what do we want our kids' ministry to be? And then how does this curriculum fit into who we are? Yeah. Um, because the curriculums are going to come and go. Curriculum companies are going out of business left and right now. Mm-hmm. Real, that's reality. Yeah. Um, because so many churches are giving their stuff away. Right. Um, so if you don't get so locked into a curriculum, that what happens if that curriculum is no more? You know, or you get tired of it, or something happens uh, doctrinally, and where you're getting that curriculum from no longer lines up with the yeah, church. That yeah. curriculum company's taking a turn. Then you're stuck if you've built around this. Right. Uh, I would say build your ministry and then find what fits, and and even don't be afraid to manipulate things. You know, a lot of churches think, well, we got to take it right out of the box and use it just the way it says. You know, no, a curriculum is <laughs> right. meant to be uh, a tool that you can manipulate any way you want to fit into your setting. That's cool, cool. Yeah. I know you work closely, uh, closely with the Publishing House, and mm-hmm. you guys uh, you know, partner with them in developing curriculum. Where can people find some of those materials that you've been a part of? Yeah, the best place to go is MyHealthyChurch.com. Yeah. You know, uh, My Healthy Church, is there you'll find resources not just for kids' ministry, but all the way through um, every area of ministry, uh, that we're, we're there uh, as a tool, resource provider for churches. And so MyHealthyChurch.com is the best place to go cool. to find everything you need. Cool, awesome, cool. Fine. Skate, Scott, skate, Scott, skeet, yeah, skeeter. <laughs> Thanks for sharing some thoughts about curriculum. I know it's a it's a question a lot of us are asking all the time. Yeah. At MyHealthyChurch.com, yep. if you're just starting to look into this and figure this out for yourself, it's a good place to start. We appreciate your thoughts and uh, hey, appreciate you. connect with you more soon. Awesome. Thanks.